Dear Twitter, I'm being the target of death threats, harassment and doxing via your social network. This is because of my political views and because the information I share online in all my social networks that it's already available to anyone online. Yesterday, my Twitter account got suspended. I guess it was the result of hundreds of unidentified Twitter accounts constantly and faithfully reporting my account. Me and my family need your help. I'm a developer from Guatemala. I have been a developer since 1994. I have been making media social apps for at least nine years. And I have been invited several times to local news networks to share my knowledge on tech-related topics and, of course, about social media. I always share my thoughts and analysis online. I talk about many topics, trying always to be as unbiased as possible. Last year, I decided to create a YouTube channel to share the wonders of my country, Guatemala. But because my views sometimes collide with the views of the local media and the hegemony of the public discourse, me and my family have received tons of insults, target harassment and death threats. I have reported each and every account that has engaged in this target harassment without any success. There are some accounts that impersonate me, taking advantage of the Twitter rules about parody. I have asked several times to Twitter to verify my account, giving all my personal information, also without success. And after all, I decided to use my knowledge in technology to find out who were behind these attacks. And it was a really easy task. All the accounts share some characteristics. They are always trying to make look good some politicians and public figures, like the Attorney General Tel Maldana, Commissioner Ivan Velázquez from CC, former Health Minister Lucrecia Hernández Mac, allegedly human rights activist Helen Mac, aunt of Lucrecia Hernández Mac, etc. They are always engaged in a meme war against all political adversaries of the aforementioned, and with common citizens like me, spreading false or biased information, like this tweet that they falsely claim was posted at one time ignoring the UTC Times on Correction Twitter does. They always take part on most activities news networks do online, promoting hashtags, spreading propaganda and misinformation. They work always together. Most of them don't have a real name or a real avatar picture. Many of them change their username when their identity is uncovered. So after finding the relations between these accounts, I published an article on my blog warning all users about their activity. This increased the attacks against me and my family, but helped me and many other people who was also being attacked to know each other and get in touch. There have been many whistleblowers inside these groups, whistleblowers that share with me information on who they are and how they work. And after receiving all this information, I did a fact check and a deep research. Then I found that most of them belong to a political group called Somos GT, which is a proxy of the political party Semilla. Thanks to What the Compras, a transparency portal that gives access to public government records and expenses to common citizens, I found that many of these Twitter users were hired by the former health minister, Lucrecia Hernández Mac, inside the Ministry of Health under her management. Other were government contractors in other government areas. The current health minister has finally made public allegations against these contractors. 1,000 contractors were hired to digitalize data but didn't have any computer to do so. You hear that right, without computers. Then I find out that many of the local news networks have ties to these groups. Juan Luis Font from the program Con Criterio was hired by Helen Mack, and Helen Mack was a member of the George Soros Foundation, having the director of another news outlet, Soy 502, Dina Fernandez, also a member of the George Soros Foundation. All this information is available online to the public on What the Compras, on this transparency portal. News outlets like Nomada, Plaza Pública, El Faro, Inside Crime, all say in their websites that are in part founded by the Open Society Foundations of George Soros. None of the local media say something about this information, and I strongly believe that the public deserves to know well their political leaders and the media, who is sponsoring them. This is why I share all this information information that is publicly available online. I always put a special effort in being as professional as possible, taking care of not sharing any personal information, but only information that is already publicly available online. Not any rumor, but things that anyone can check online, always with links to the sources. I strongly believe in facts over opinions. I have never asked anyone to believe in me. To the contrary, I have asked to be challenged, to be proven wrong. Freedom of speech is a right both in Guatemala and in the US, and this right is not meant to protect people from others' opinion, but of the censorship of our government, something that sadly isn't been well executed, because as you can see, my account has been suspended by false reports, reports made by these accounts that were paid with government money. 
I'm not liberal nor conservative. This is not a partition issue. Marriage equality. LGBT rights. Being or not pro-choice. Death penalty. Gun laws are the kind of issues that I believe must be discussed in the most civil and professional way possible. But because the hegemony of the local discourse has been hijacked by the local media, which most of the time have the same people I'm questioning by sharing facts that can be confirmed online, I have been bullied by some of the local media. I have been invited by other media outlets to express myself and I always do it in the most respectful way. I have questioned the involvement of the president of Oxfam International, former finance minister of the UNE party and former secretary general of SEMIA, Juan Alberto Fuentes Knight, in two well-known corruption cases, Transurbano and Mi Familia Progresa. Almost no media outlet spoke about these cases until the Times published a story, a story about allegations of orgies taking place in IT by Oxfam International, with money from people who wanted to help. I have questioned what has been done with $800,000 the European Commission granted to Mirna Max Foundation. It was supposed to help Guatemalans? I believe these are some of the questions that we have to make, not the easy ones. And these questions are not made by our media, because most of the media is colluded with them. It has always been that way. If you don't believe me, maybe you believe a leaked cable from the US Embassy in Guatemala, published by Wikileaks. This cable states that our news are the best news that the money can buy. Our media is engaged in a false narrative that anyone who dares to question Attorney General Tel Maldana is part of a net center. In the past two weeks, they invited some experts to discuss this story about net centers. Experts that I have advised before on those same exact topics. And how convenient is that after spreading this false narrative, after two weeks of spreading this misinformation to the public, now they report my account until it got suspended. Same technique as 4chan. Dear Twitter, I have no reason to lie to you, and I ask you not to believe in me, but to check your logs, to review each and every account that falsely report mine to check the users that are engaged in insulting me and my family, even accounts that you have verified before, to check the users that have made death threats against me. You can check my credentials online. It's a Google search away. You can verify I'm a developer. You can even verify the report I did in a bug I found in Twitter. And by the way, a bug that hasn't been fixed. Dear Twitter, please help those who try to shine a light in the world's darkness corners. Those who want to have the powerful accountable Freedom of expression is essential in any democracy on the pursuit of informing and debating each other to make the government of the people possible. Notions of objectivity and freedom of expression, based on facts and evidence, are trying to be undermined and in some instances ignored completely. And this is why your power and your responsibility to dig, to question and to counter distortions and untruths is more important than ever before. The only way to have a consensus is by agreeing on a baseline of facts when it comes to the challenge that confront us all. I truly wish that I could denounce all these abuses I have received, all these target harassment and death threats to my local authorities, just as Twitter recommends. But these authorities are the very same authorities I am denouncing of corruption. Even most of the human rights organizations in my country are working with these people. We have no place to denounce. This is why I ask you to review your logs, to review each and every report made against my account, to review the accounts that are making death threats to me and my family, to review the accounts that are engaged in target harassment. Me and my family know you will do the right thing. You already have all my personal information in case you want to contact me. And if you are watching this video and you want to contact me, you can do so by visiting my website. To all of my YouTube subscribers, from now on, I will post a video weekly in English, if you can call this English. So stay tuned. Thank you and please share this video. See ya.